Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today on this webinar. So this is all about starting a successful drone business with these three things. We're going to be talking about good characteristics, good habits, what we should be doing, how to get started in this industry, how to revolutionize organizations. Obviously, we're going to be talking about drones today as well, which you'll all be very happy about. We've got some of the newer drones on the block, and we're going to be talking and discussing all of the above. If you have any questions, please use the questions tab. That will be brilliant. Uh, we'll be work, working through this on the right hand side. You will see that there is a questions tab, there's a polls tab, which we're not going to be using today. Um, if you can use that, that's brilliant. This just means that we're not going to miss anything when it comes around to the questions at the end. We're going to be doing a Q&A at the end. So anything you have, make sure it's in there. If we can just do a quick check, I can see some of you are enjoying the music to start with. Can I just get a thumbs up or a yes if everyone can hear me and everyone can see me okay? Perfect. Thank you, everyone. That's spot on. Um, and without further ado, I think we'll uh, we'll, we'll crack on. Um, so, yeah, as I said earlier, this is the start to a successful uh, drone business with these three things. So it's going to be hosted by myself today, Jamie Corden. I'm the educational BDM here at Copters. Previously, I was working within getting businesses started, also helping businesses through the use of drones. So we're at Copters. We've been working now in the industry for six to seven years, um, helping revolutionizing organizations through the use of drones, um, whether that is saving time, saving money, making processes safer or more environmentally friendly through the use of drones. And that's what we do. That is what we offer. As you can see from behind me, we are a 360 solution based organization. So that means we are completely unbiased. Today, we are going to be mainly featured on one of our manufacturers, but that doesn't mean we can't work with any of the above that are behind me, which I now realize are backwards. But we're all good. We're all good. So yeah, again, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for everyone using the chat. That's brilliant. We've got a bit of a community going already. Um, and, uh, and let's crack on. Let's get going. So we're just waiting for, for Steve to get all logged in. But I'm, as soon as we get started, Steve will be with us. And then so Mark, uh, morning, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Mark is the founder of S4G Drone Services. Um, and Mark is going to be uh, um, going to be joining us and we're talking us through what he's done with his business, how he's got that started, what he's made that um, to be successful and getting it started. Thank you, everyone, for giving it. Giving me the update, David Jagger, thanks for the update. If it's not backwards for you guys, then we're all good to go. And and Mark, did you want to introduce yourself uh, and we will kick this, this webinar off? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, I don't know whether I need to have my video on yet, Jamie, do I, or, or not? Fire away, yeah, get, get the video on, all good. Let's get a face out there as well then. <laughs> right, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining. Um, yeah, nice uh, sunny morning, so I've got the blackout blind in front of me this morning. Uh, and I was just quite intrigued there, Jamie. There's another Mark Elliott in the thread from Northern Ireland. So there you go. <laughs> we've, we've all clanned up this morning ready. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, great work. Yeah, Mark, do you want to just start off by telling us who you are, where you're from, what you do and what your business is? What is S4G Drones? Yeah, sure. No problem. So uh, my, my background is in uh, sales, marketing, product development and innovation um, in uh, blue chip organisations. And then um, I set up S4G Drone Services. Um, oh, well, I think we're just coming into the third year now. So it's still a young business and still growing. Um, certainly loads more to learn for, for me and for how the business grows from here. Um, but we're off to a flying start. I hate the expression, but you know what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but on the end, there's a lot of puns in this industry, um, but I am here for it. So, so no, that's, that's spot on. Um, so I'm trying to avoid as many as I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see if they don't take off. But um, so, Mark, how long have you been in the drone industry, um, and, and where did it all start? Do you want to give us a bit of background on? on that yeah, yeah, no problem. So, so it all started when I when I was a kid. I uh, I bought a model, uh, or I built uh, model gliders um, when I was younger down in uh, Brighton, where I come from originally. I'm now in London, and uh, I used to fly those remote control gliders off the side of the South Downs. Um, which is uh, both exciting and terrifying when you spend £100 back in the <clears throat> 80s and um, suddenly you're, you're launching this thing off the side of, uh, of a hill into nowhere and uh, praying that those, those controllers you put together uh, work. Uh, and then really sort of been sort of playing and tinkering with different um, flight crafts since then. 
um, and then formalized uh, the business um, in around about sort of July 2020. It was during COVID. Uh, and that, and then I came up to copters and trained with you guys. Um, and then I think due to weather, then the flight test was delayed till about November, but I'd already launched the business by then. Yeah. Um, and started to sort of like look at the boat. <laughs> Yeah, spot on, spot on. Yeah, and, and that's it. That's well, I think we're jumping in early for some of the the business tips, but that's yeah. something that we're really, really keen on with uh, with the business side. Just because you're you're doing your GBC, your A2, PFCO back in the day, that doesn't mean that the business can't start. Um, and, and that's a perfect example. So, what did you do before you you had completed your flight assessment, then, Mark? Um, yeah, so I, I was still practicing lots and trying to make sure that my skill sets were up. Um, but yeah, we are we are preempting what we're going to go into in a bit. But um, literally, I, I I also run a marketing company, so I, I went and spoke to some of my trustworthy customers and said, look, I'm going to be doing this. Um, I could do with some you know case studies, some opportunities. Um, so would that be okay if I, you know, came and did some work pro bono for you? Of course, they went, no, absolutely not. Please don't do anything for free. <laughs> um, and um, yes, yeah, so just picked two or three key clients who I knew would a be malleable for me to go and do the work but also that gave um, a good level of kudos um, out to potential customers as well perfect no that's spot on that's spot on and as any questions do pop up guys do use the, the questions tab on the right hand side um and steve uh morning morning steve and thank morning you. sorry we've had uh technical issues and uh, <laughs> but for some reason it says my i'm not allowed to use my camera i don't know if some ai has decided i'm too ugly to actually appear on the, the show but it won't unfortunately it won't let me use the camera understood so yeah. you'll, have to, you'll have to take my uh, static image that, that i'm actually here yeah no spot on well uh no that, that's spot on it's um ideal <laughs> we won't dive into that too much with, with the camera then um but yeah steve do you want to introduce yourself as, as co-founder as copters and, and and where it all began yeah, sure. Yeah, well, um, yeah, my, I'm Steve Coulson. Um, I'm 53 years young for, for my sins. Um, been in business um, for 23 years now, um, actually. Um, set up with, with my business partner now, Paul, and another guy back in 2000, which was very much in the offshore, offshore oil and gas and maritime industry involved in instrumentation making systems for gas detection for emissions monitoring for sa safety systems and uh, ran that business uh, for 18 years um, around six years ago we we decided that the we were always about over the horizon innovation and the um the industry we were in the maritime industry was very much not that it was a case of they would do something if they were mandated to do so uh, without looking at the value add um it was a laggard industry we were always wanting to embrace technology but a little frustrated by the speed of that industry so we we decided that we would look around for different uh different industries where all technology internet of things we kept coming back to the drone um technology sector and specifically enterprise uh, organizations um and hence copters was born uh focusing with a mission to revolutionize organizations using drones and, and today that is the 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 mission that that holds true today um and organizations of all sizes and um you know we saw that the next you know it, it, back in 2016 the next 10 20 years were going to be uh a time of huge growth a huge opportunity in this sector that was at that time um in its infancy at best um so uh so yeah that's why we started copters that's why it runs today that's what our our focus is around you know of, of helping organizations of all types and sizes utilize um the the huge benefits that come from using um, unmanned aerial vehicles that's fantastic that's brilliant thanks for that steve and um and just to, to follow on from that we'll we'll dive straight into the the, the more business st strategy and how that all started you touched on it a little bit there steve can you just tell us about 
what was the catalyst for you to move into drones? I know you, you've mentioned about you saw the, the opportunity a few times pop up um, at previous business, but where did it all change? When did you notice the, the opportunity was there? Well, I, I mean, like anything, you should research any anything. If you're going to get into something, research it, whether that's uh, kayaking or, you know, jumping off base jumping or something like that or starting a business research it research it and the research w was compelling and we like disruptive technology disruptive industries um because it, it brings with it so many opportunities and so so much um possibility that that hasn't not yet been um or wasn't at the time uh set in stone so it was a case of you did did the research and said well this you know this is a new industry that is going to be worth and you've you've all seen the uh most people will have seen if they've done a bit of research just googling that you know, the different huge numbers of billions and it, it's really doesn't matter it's big and it's continuing to rise so with that comes uh you know a great opportunity in so many different forms yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit scary sometimes when you see some of the numbers on paper, uh, the 40 billion that's predicted by 2030 for, for the UAV market in the UK. It's it's scary to think, but personally, myself within Copters, I've, I've felt that grow over the last four years um, through the investment businesses have in hardware and software, but also how the, the technology has changed and the different variants of, of industries that are now using drones. So, yeah, I, I completely feel and, and understand what you're saying there. And, and Mark, just to just to back that up, what was the catalyst for yourself? What was the point where you thought, right, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to get into drones. Um, was it something that happened overnight um, or, or where did it all come from? Yeah, as I said, it, it was I think the, the final catalyst for me was looking for a, a new business opportunity. Um, as I mentioned briefly, though, I run a marketing company and still do to this day. Um, but right around the time of COVID, um, I had that time, which is a very rare thing, as Steve knows and you know in business, um, to actually step back and almost too much time on my ads. Um, so whilst the other marketing company um, was kind of in a hold position because of the start of COVID, um, I really sort of just had that when I was out and about in the fields here up near North London. And I was out with the drone one sunny afternoon. I thought, look, you know, I love doing this. Um, you know, what what is what is what more is there that can be done here? You know, what how can I turn this into something? Uh, and that that was really as simple as that as the catalyst. It was uh, literally a blue sky moment. So I'm going to go more that gig yesterday, and I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yes, but well, well, this is it. When I have a conversation with people regarding drones, a lot of ideas do come to you when you are flying. I could use a drone to do this. Uh, I potentially could do an inspection of something like this. And it's generally when you are out in the field. A lot of our great ideas do come from our trainers when they're doing flight assessments. Have we thought about doing this? Could we map this before we go into et cetera, et cetera? So, yeah, I can, I can completely believe that. And then, Matt, just, just talking about starting that business, we've already talked about how you, you started the business before you did your flight assessment. Um, what you had in place and you already have experience as we say but does mindset come into this or it was something that you just fell into can you give us a bit of a, an idea on uh, I, think, I think mindset yeah it's, it's crucial I mean as, as I mentioned um, I, I, I'm, I'm close to Steve's age not far off it and um, so just a touch younger Steve um, not much and you know I've been, I've been working in business I've worked, I said, I've worked in like innovation teams inside large organizations um, one being EDF that I used to work for. And I was always um, pushing the boundaries of what could be done, what could happen, and never accepting the norm. Um, so for me, there is a little bit of natural instinct there. And even going back to my youth, which is probably a bit off piece here, but, um, you know, I, I, ran, I ran and set up bands and um, I did all the marketing for them naturally. And I was the guy that looked after purse strings. Um, so, you know, even on a small, small level, that taught me stuff that I went into um, starting up. Um, and then I think around that, then I, I already have built up a good network of people and I'm very open to collaboration and learning. So um, one of the first things I did before fully launching the business was reach out to a business coach 
a lady called Jane, who's fantastic. No, no, no plug there, but she's amazing. And, um, and she's been through that early journey with me and sort of helped shape my mindset as well as just the commercial things that need to be done. But yeah. Yeah, spot on. Um, yeah, great little plug there. Uh, but Steve, that's something that you've had in place as well, actually. And this isn't something that we've, we've planned previously, but you've had, had mentors in the past um, through different businesses. Is that right? I have, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think maybe three or four different, well, th three sort of official mentors where I went, um, you know, as a, a, what I'll call a, you know, an appointment for an amount of money um, on a weekly basis. Uh, but, I mean, lots of mentors over the years, and it's a case of in any situation, whoever you meet, there's always something to learn. And I think it's it's getting away from having an ego and being hum humble enough to ask questions and listen um it kind of comes back to a bit of a sales uh, um key core skill is ask questions but then listen and you know take take the advice with humility and you know and go away and, and see how you can apply that and sometimes it doesn't apply to you but um just you know, I, I a long time ago lost lost any ego. To be honest, uh, I um, I just want to learn, and I just want to learn from other people because I I know, you know, like everybody, I'm I've got lots of flaws, and I I just want to learn. So it's if the, there's often free advice around. There's advice if you're prepared to listen. Obviously, some people give you bad advice, but it's a case of taking taking advice but actually then looking and calibrating whether it's good advice uh, but i think if you ask the right people you're going to get the right advice i think as well steve is it is it, you said i've been humble though i totally agree and it's it's hard sometimes to reach out um at the beginning i found because particularly in the specialist groups on like facebook and places like that you know you know you have to ask what i would call a stupid question but then you know that you could get berated for that by some that are less gentle with others, um, if I say yeah. in the industry. And I think one has to just have a little bit of, you know, has to build a bit of a thick skin and be resilient to that mm -hmm. because the good ones will come through with those answers and they, they are there. A lot, of, a lot of the pilots, you know, in the UK and internationally, because I'm on American groups and European ones as well, um, are really willing to share their knowledge and help out. And others are a bit protective of their knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's a mixed bag of people. It, there's no, it's like a parliament. There's no one type of person, but certainly there are a lot more good people out there who are really excited about this industry and like to share and, and advise and help people. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think generally in online in forums, you will, you will get, you will get the, you know, you will get sincere advice. If anybody's berating you, I think they would have to ask maybe what's going on in their life. I mean, what a, what a load of wasted energy that is. Um, so just as well as being humble, you've got to develop a bit of a thick skin as well in, in a way that, you know, um, no, no question is a stupid question. Just, um, just, but you, I think, I think the helpful people will come through. They'll come through and give you good advice. I, I like to call it the, uh, the Clumbo effect where one asks, um, like Peter Faulkner used to, if you're old enough to remember it, like I am, um, he used to ask those stupid questions, but he actually, he did that to draw people out, to give him a little bit more information. Um, so I always refer to it as the Colombo effect. Yeah, well, um, you, you, I know exactly what you mean with one last question, um, but, you know, we are probably, we're giving away our uh, our, our grey hair there, aren't we? I'm afraid so, or, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to take, I've got a little bit of grey hair, but... <laughs> Yes, no, that's, that's brilliant, guys. And, and just to, to pivot the conversation slightly then to, to hardware. And so, Matt, what is your solution? Where did that begin? What drones did you start with? And, and what do you have now? Um, and and cause obviously you do the virtual tour side of things as well. Do you want to go into that as well? Yeah, um, okay. So um, I, I think, yeah, coming back to part of the previous thing, which is you don't know what you don't know. Um, and I think you have to start somewhere. And I truly believe that, you know, that... Um, Every journey is started with one step. So, so literally um, bought the smallest possible drone that I could afford. Money was tight during COVID, so yeah, bought a, a Mavic Mini One, 
which I know is a starting point for a lot of people. Um, and that allowed me to go and fly uh, around small areas and get going. And, and I'll be honest, I, I didn't really know which direction I wanted to go into in the drone sector at that moment in time. So it just mm -hmm. gave me time to think and play and, you know, enjoy doing it. Um, and then as I was really up in the background, I started to look at kind of which sector, um, which kind of kind of vertical really I wanted to go into um, and then started to hone down which drones should be purchased next. And obviously came back to you guys and asked for advice because de definitely green as grass at that point. So then then sort of moved them up into some of the smaller enterprise drones. Um, so I think I bought the original uh, ME uh, Dual, so the Enterprise Dual. Uh, with the, the cameras on it because I was looking at thermography and where would that go. Uh, later on then purchased um, the uh, Pro 2 because I needed a higher end, high resolution camera for some of the work I was doing and that included mainly inspections but I wanted higher res images um, to improve the efficiency of what I was doing. Uh, and then more recently um, put, picked up a P4 RTK um to increase the accuracy on what i'm doing so it's been quite progressive um that's not the end of the line um you know i'm already looking at you know, future state which i'll come on to in a minute and um we, we do hire out drones that we need to use for certain jobs because we're not quite at the point of investing into those yet because you know the next jump into the full enterprise drones is, is big as you know yeah spawn spawn no, that's ideal well uh, what we'll do is from there We'll jump into some of the different bundles, what we have in place at the moment with Copters with our different business starts packages, and then we'll dive back into um, some of the hardware and what we'll get into that then, Mark. So these are our current business starter packages and very, very similar to what Mark started with was a Mavic Mini. We have this as a startup drone, where to begin, easy to fly, easy and, well, essentially cheap to get into the industry. Um, to give you an idea of scale, this is the size of the box. So imagine there's a lot of packaging in there, very, very small, very, very simple, easy to fly. This is the basic. Where to start off, we have a lot of large drone service providers, um, large companies that will have this as a quick tool to throw up in a tight situation. There are some loopholes with the CAA and the current regulations where the mini does fit really, really nicely into those. If you are working in the industry, this isn't going to be your plow horse. This isn't going to be the drone that you can rely on to win you big work. Um, I'm sure Mark will agree that this is a tool that needs to be part of a fleet as part of your toolbox, but it's not going to be your main drone. A lot of people ask when they're getting into the industry, oh, I'll just start with a mini. I'll just start with this. And then they don't come back. They don't get a larger drone because this drone isn't going to win you work. As Mark's just said there, he invested in a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, which was industry leading at the time. The first thermal drone to be um, on a Mavic, which was a complete game changer for the industry of the likes of search and rescue for inspection and that thermal analysis still being used to this day. Um, so that was the jump. And that's what's going to win you that work because it's, it's something different. It's a completely different um, arm to your business and a different tool in the toolbox. This mini bundle is 1,500 excluded VAT. It has the GVC, the A2, the off-core level four, which you can only get at Copters, which shows that we have level four standard of training, which means that we have to be tested on our training as well. We have to uh, pass the tests. Level four standard of training is like a foundation level of uh, university, your HNC, HND courses for some of you um, to get that understanding. That's the level of our training. We know that our training is harder. We know that ours is the next step up. But when you go into the industry, you're representing us. We need to know that we've trained you to the best of our ability. So when you go out into the industry, it's going to help you. It's going to save you money on your insurances, going to fill you with confidence. So when you do go out to do your first job or your 10th or your 100th job, you're confident that you've been trained by the best and to the best standard. And that's what the level four is all about. It's something small. It's an add-on to the GVC but it really packs a punch in the industry. And that's why we can work with the likes of the military for things like LCAS training. So anyone that's interested in your LCAS, that's where it comes in the TQUQ level four and level five. So with this bundle, like I say, you get the drone, you get the fly more, you get the controller. So everything's in one place. And that's what business startup packages are all about. You've got the drone, the hardware, the software, and obviously the support, which goes without saying from copters. 
normally to give you an idea about this bundle we have large companies that will put five to ten people on a gvc course at a time this is the drone that they'll give them to practice to get the hours under the belt before they go on to your larger mavics your matrices etc etc so this is generally a very very nice toy in its consumer level Moving on to the next one is the Mavic 3 Flymore bundle. So this isn't the Cine version. This is the, the standard, which comes with a Flymore. Note that you can't upgrade from the Mavic 3 Flymore to the Mavic 3 Cine because it's it's a different drone um, and there is an Apple ProRes com components to the second drone, which you can't add to. You can't go up and you can't come back down. So when you're making your decision on the new Mavic 3, which the industry has been waiting for for three or four years, make sure you're making the right decision. If you are on a tighter budget and you're looking for just a drone to get started, this is ideal. So fantastic imagery. This was created to replace the Inspire as a more compact, easier to use, easier to fly drone with a lighter weight. So that means you can fly it in more risky areas, closer to people and congested areas. You can see the Hasselblad camera, they've kept it and upgraded it. Now has a new body shape. It looks fantastic, it's brilliant to fly and the content that you can get from it is just fantastic. So as you can see there, the price 2997, this is the drone, the fly more. Um, you do not get the smart controller with this one, you get the, the GVC A2 and level four again, and that's delivery is all included. That is one package in the support again that you'll get from Copters. The next upgrade is the cinematography bundle. So we get asked a lot of the time about the Inspire 3. Where is it coming? When is it coming? There's nothing on the horizon and there hasn't been for a couple of years because this is it. This is the Mavic 3 Cine, Mavic 3 Cine Premium, and it is a fantastic drone. Some of the content that we've seen and shared ourselves of this drone is unbelievable. We see it a lot with David Attenborough's, um, his documentaries on TV now. This is the drone that they're using. Um, it's stunning. It's TV standard, 5K uh, resolution, absolutely awesome drone. You can see the telecamera at the top there. Um, so this is now going to be used in the Mavic 3 Enterprise as well. So you've got the tele, then you've got the wide angle Hasselblad camera. So in terms of sensors, this is top of the market, absolutely fantastic. In terms of flight time, that's been increased now as well. So up in the 40s, they say 45 minutes, but realistically drone people, as we know, it's around 41 minutes. And again, you're going to get your GBC. You're going to get your A2 CFC. And all of these options you can do face-to-face. -face, you can do it online. Uh, Industry-leading training locations. We have the most locations in the UK. Um, and we've trained the most pilots in the UK as well. So when it comes to training, you know who to come to. If you're looking for visual, if you're looking for industries such as media, marketing, this is the drone for you. This is what you should be looking at. Um, Drones and all of our business status packages are meant to be super versatile. They're meant to give you the power to say yes when you're getting into the industry. So with this drone, for example, you can do modeling. You can do mapping to a, a certain level. That telecamera allows you to do inspections. But primarily, this is a visual drone. This is RGB and for marketing and media. Next, we have the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So I've got one here with me and I'll make me a little bit bigger here. So this, there's not many more of these left and there's only, I believe, 10 downstairs that we have in our, in our lockup. So in terms of drones, industry leading, huge player in the game. Uh, from our sensors, I've got the, the spotlight on here. You can get the beacon, you can get the speaker, generally made for inspection and search and rescue. You have the, the thermal sensor and you also have the RGB sensor. 48 megapixels made up of four separate sensors that give you that amazing zoom capability. Just pop that down there. And, and essentially, th this drone is super, super versatile again. So you've got thermal. You've also got visual. You've got the zoom capabilities. All of this we used to see on the Matrice, a heavy set drone that took a while to get put, put up together and for your larger jobs. This now means that you can apply for tenders and smaller opportunities of the bigger scale with a drone that's compact and easy to use. They say you can get this out in a couple of minutes. We can do it in seconds. Very, very simple. You get the ease of flying with the Mavic and you get the great data 
from its fantastic sensors, easy to fly, great for confidence, and a fantastic drone in the industry. Like I say, we've only got 10 of these left. So this is 5497. If you are interested in this drone, let us know. As you can imagine, we have things like uh, the police and fire that are constantly buying this drone in batches. So if you are interested in this drone and you do prefer the older models, get in touch and we'll move from there. Right then, we've got the new drones. Um, so again, I'll, I'll make myself nice and big. So firstly, we have the Mavic 3 Enterprise, and this is part of the Surveyor Bundle. It's called the Surveyor Bundle because of what it's made for. That is the industry that it should be going in, just like the Mavic 3 is for cinematography. So here it is, the brand new drone. It looks fantastic. The feel, it's got really nice texture to it, a darker gray. Here we go. And this is made for... Uh, your mapping, your modeling. So it's got a very, very similar camera and sensor setup. So it's not a Hasselblad, but it's still got the four thirds sensor, as you can see here. And then it's got a tele camera on the top, on the top ledge. And this is 56 times zoom now, which is so powerful for a drone of its size. We're used to seeing this on things like the M30 in the Matrice range. So having a drone of this size and having these capabilities is phenomenal. We've got lots of videos and content online. So have a look at those. James Pickard, in-house surveyor, raves about this drone already. And this is replacing the Phantom 4 RTK. DJI came into us and, and, and we had a meeting a couple of months ago. And they said, look, we're discontinuing the Phantom. And we, we were shocked. It's such a placeholder and, and a huge drone for the market. We were shocked. We couldn't believe that they were going to get rid of it. And we thought it has to be something fantastic to replace it because everyone loves that. So... In terms of drone, we've tested it, we've we've put it out in the field, and it is a brilliant, brilliant drone. The way the mechanical shutter works and the, the speeds that you can now record in, it can save you huge amounts of time on your surveying. You can fly higher and faster and get the same data quality as the Phantom 4, which seems bizarre, unheard of. And this is another huge example of how the industry is changing. Something even crazier is that it's cheaper than the Phantom 4 RTK. So if that's something that you're interested in saving money and getting better data, get in touch. And as you can see, 4447, executing VAT. Again, you're going to get your, your drone training courses, your GVCA2 level four, and everything can be backed up with the Copters Academy online on our holistic learning platform, or you can do that face-to-face -face in our purpose-built training courses that we have here in HQ in Leeds or 10 other locations across the UK. And yes, David, 56 times zoom, you wouldn't believe it. We didn't believe it at first, but since you have a wide angle lens and you have a tele camera, we've seen the 28 times zoom. Now we have 56, which is phenomenal. This means you don't have to get nice and close to everything because you can do, get great data from a safe distance. And that's what it's all about. We're saving time, we're saving money, but we're making processes safer when we're revolutionizing these different organizations. Amazing for your modeling, your mapping. But as we say, when it comes to drones, especially from DJI, they're super versatile. So you can use this in media. It's got 48 megapixels. You can use it in marketing. You can use it for inspection with that amazing zoom. Search and rescue, you, there's an element that you can use it in all these different industries. So if you're looking to model, map, survey, inspect, get a better drone for less price than the, the previous model which seems bizarre, especially advertising it like this, is an amazing drone, we're blown away by it, easy to use, comes in a hard pelly case, um, and a fantastic, fantastic model um, in the UK industry, in the world for that matter. Next, we have the Mavic 3 Thermal, so all part of the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. Here we have it again. Fantastic, and just to give you a, an idea of scale, here it is with the, the dust mask on just to keep the sensor nice and safe. So really simple to, to get out. So in terms of, of timing, if you're out in the industry, double press on the back, this goes, you've got your controller on, which I can show you as well. Simple to use, really nice feel. Again, nice textures that you have from the controller. Everything's in, in finger distance and off you go. It's really, really simple. And that's what the Mavics are all about. It's about saving time in the field, getting out into the industry, getting the job done, collecting the right data and great data and getting paid for the job.
And that's what we want to see you do. The reason these are called business starter packages is for exactly that. Arguably, they're now about revolutionizing businesses or helping businesses, which might be something that you're interested in. But in terms of getting the industry going and getting your business going, these are the drones to do it now. As you can see, the, the drone has a thermal sensor, a, a wide angle sensor. And again, we have that telecam. Uh, sensor as well for your zoom so you're still going to get all that zoom you're going to get fantastic thermal similar to the the mavic 2 enterprise advanced you're going to get 48 times uh, for 48 megapixels sorry you've got all those zoom you've got 640 by 512 resolution for your thermal which is fantastic and industry standard for thermal amazing bit of kit in terms of movement the mavic 2 sorry mavic 3 enterprise we have in stock it's ready to go uh, which is surprisingly quick for DJI. We absolutely love that, and we're already shipping orders. We've had plenty go out already, and the thermal, we've had a, we're getting a surprise shipment in. So if you are one of those that are looking to get this brand new drone, we do already have a, we already have some coming over from DJI already, which is a brilliant surprise for us. Um, so get in touch if that's something that you're interested in. So that's enough from me in terms of the drones and the hardware. That's something that we can look at. If you are interested in those, please let us know. Uh, it'd be nice to, I'll just invite everyone back in stage now. Uh, and we're just going to talk about the, the different business acronyms. Uh, Mike, you were talking about what drones you have, how you got into the industry. Um, in terms of your top tips, and, and, and we, we talk about secrets, but it's more about what did you do? what experiences and what practices have you put in place and on what do you adhere to when you are running your business and starting that business? Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, and some really good questions coming through. I uh, picked up a mm. couple of those. I hope you answered those okay for people. Uh, and some really good comments coming there as well. So um, yeah, keep those coming, guys and girls. Um, so I think the, the first thing I think that is, is miss is having a business plan. Um, so I'll expand on that um, yeah. before I come to the other two points. Um, and you can't write a business plan until you know where you're going or what you think you want to be going into. So I think coming back to that day in the field where I was out flying around trying to think which way to go, then I went back and thought, well, actually, what is it I enjoy about this? Yeah, yeah, sure, it's lovely being in the sun, you know, pretty pictures and you know, lovely fields and trees. But um, but what is what is it that I can bring into the next business uh, party? So there's a gentleman on here, I think it's Dom, who's a surveyor, is just asking about you know, could he? progress into doing um, drone work? And the answer is, yeah, of course you can. Um, and what he's bringing to the party then is his surveying experience. Um, and for me, uh, I think that's key is, is what do you enjoy? What existing skills do you have? And then really which way do you want to go? The last important bit, being a marketer myself, is to really look at the market opportunity in your area or kind of yeah, can you find a way into different sectors and so on and so forth. And ultimately, you've got to enjoy what you're doing because this is a it becomes a career very quickly. Um, and mm -hmm. the fun of flying stops and it becomes serious. So um, I think that's the first thing is to go and work out what you want to do, what you love, then start writing some sort of business plan. And I'm not talking about war and peace. You know, I'm talking about, you know, in the next three months, I will do X, Y and Z. I will contact this many people because without sales, there is no business. And without revenue, there's no business. So it's as simple as that. So, um, yeah, then niche down towards what it is you love. Um, ensure that you are being properly remunerated. So don't cut your own throat on pricing. Um, you know, start higher, a little bit higher, and then work out what the tolerance is on the market. Because I see so many jobs uh, where um, drone pilots are getting desperate, some of them. And, and they're, you know, they're doing like full roof inspections, even for residential and reporting and planning and all that sort of stuff for 50 quid. Now, you are not gonna survive as a business in this market doing that. Um, you, you couldn't survive in any business doing that. Um, it's just too small uh, a margin to live on to pay your petrol, all the basics and your energy at home these days, of course. Um, so I think then moving on from just sales, you know, drive your marketing hard and you know, make sure that you're out there. You know, If people don't know you're there, they're not gonna book you. You know, you've got to be seen to be there and you've got to be seen in the places where your niche of clients are. So, you know, if you're going for big commercial work, like Steve mentioned about the commercial organizations or and you mentioned about police work and things like that, 
it's no good filling around over on TikTok because you're less likely, it's not impossible, but it's less likely you're going to find those customers there. You're going to probably find them over on LinkedIn or they're going to be looking on Google. Um, yeah. And then sort of your mid-sized customers, well, it depends who they are, you know, but th- my advice from a marketing perspective is be where your customer segment are and, and work that channel really hard. So say it's Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, work it really hard so you're not overloading yourself trying to be everywhere all the time. Um, so that's um, amazingly my first point. But um, just just to say invest uh, also in the right IT, the right kit for the right time. Don't go and buy the Lamborghini when you haven't learned to drive. Uh, really, I've seen that happen too many times as well. And, and coming back to our earlier point, I would say really collaborate and help others. So I, I mentioned again the surveying gentleman over there, Dom. If you dive into the, the Facebook group to start giving really good quality surveying advice to people, they will open up to you on the driver's side. Um, so, yeah, you can't do it alone. Let's work together. Yeah, that's my first point on the business plan. Sean, yeah, sweet, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, well, well this is it. It's, I, I completely agree that the collaboration is a great way to get into the industry. It's a great way to, to build experience, learn from others. Um, so it's something that we really push, um, especially when we are looking at the uh, more specialist level of kit go and learn from someone else we've trained a lot of pilots we've supplied a lot of kit in the uk more than any other supplier um so we know who to push and who to push in the right areas so if you do have questions on this or you're looking to meet up things like our facebook private group um you're more than welcome to join once you've done some of our training we can push you in there people like mark are more than happy to to, to have these conversations and, and network like mark have I've just been speaking to one of the guys in the office and, and he, uh, Sam, had a good chat with you at the demo day. And he said that you, you've been networking, have a really good chat with everyone. And that's what these days are all about. So copters, we obviously supply anything and everything when it comes to drones. But it's more than that. It's about helping you so you can help us. And it's, it's a to and fro. And that's another form of collaboration. So, yeah, I completely agree. Completely agree. I know, I know, and, uh, I mean, just on that sort of simple line, I mean, I... I've been remiss not to mention it, but in those early days, I, I saw jobs, you know, as a marshal or spotter, whichever you want to call it. And and before I was fully qualified, I was diving out on jobs um, all over the place, um, you know, just to be with other pilots who are already doing this stuff for real. And, um, you know, I, I did some work for a company down in Dalston. It was a massive, massive block of flats being three-dimensionally modelled and everything like that. And I was just the marshal on, on, on the three days we were there. But what I learned from those guys was incredible. And and to this day, um, we still do collaborative jobs together. Uh, and that's, you know, two and a half years later. So you can build some yeah. really good friendships here as well, which is cool. Yeah, I agree. No, I completely agree. It is a friendly uh, market and industry. You just have to kind of break the ice, don't you? I completely agree. Um, and yeah, Matt, do you want to, to carry on with your, your other points? Yeah, so I can't just mute myself in case I started to talk too much. <laughs> um, so, so the, the second uh, really big point here is, um, I suppose the the, the, power, the the standard phrase is Rome wasn't built in a day. So, but what my advice here is is to be patient and tenacious. So you have to be really working it, but not expect you know the, the fact that you've just done your A two, your GBC. Um, that suddenly the world has been waiting for you and they'll come flooding through your door and the phone will be red hot and you won't have enough time to do the jobs. It ain't going to work like that, uh, I'm afraid. Um, but if you've done your business plan, your marketing, you're building up your reputation slowly, gently, that will help. So don't let that put you off. I'm not trying to put people off at all. Um, but the more you can demonstrate your skills, the more you can build up case studies, get reviews on Google and other places, that are genuine reviews and that sort of side, that will really help. Um, and then really look at just what is, is it that slightly differentiates you from the, the pack? So if, you, if you've if you honed down and you're going to be you know, a thermal surveyor or you're going to be you know a, a building modeler for architects, you know, really talk to those people, keep honing those forwards and what will happen is you become the specialist. Mm-hmm. Now, you won't get the volume of work, but you'll get the quality. And as you build the quality up, then the volume will come. Um, so yeah, really in that second major point is be really patient. Yeah, 
don't panic, you know, and start thinking, oh, no, I better add this service, I better add this drone. Because you'll hear a million things that you should do from, from the community. Oh, yeah, but what you need to have is you've got to have a Matrice 300. You've got to have this, this payload tomorrow morning at 21 grand. Absolute nonsense at, to start with. You know, in time, yes, those tools will be maybe needed if that's where you're going. But you might not need to ever go there. I've got a photographer friend. She she's using I think she's using the Hasselblad on, on the slightly older uh, Pro, the Pro 2. Um, and she makes her living just off that one drone. That's it. That's her workhorse. And um, she is superb. She does HDR imaging um, all over the world just using that one drone. Um, so, yeah. So be patient. Um, as Steve said earlier, you know, some advice isn't good advice. Most of it is, but some of it take with a pinch of salt and be you know, courteous when you get it back. So um, it will come, but Rome was not built in the day. No, I completely agree. Completely agree. And I miss the Mavic 2 Pro as well. It's fantastic. But the Mavic 3 is, is a good replacement massively. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, number five. Top tip number five then, please, Matt. Oh, num number three. I didn't get oh, to five yet. Number three, <laughs> Rob. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could probably give five five tips, but uh, yeah. I don't. Um, so I think the the one that's sorely missed uh, around this, you know, we can all talk commercial finances, drones, kit, software. Actually, it's your personal development that's going to really um, push through. So I've mentioned this earlier, but it is crucial. And so sort of as you step forward, you kind of you start to see gaps in your knowledge. Um, I certainly have over time. I've suddenly noticed that. Yeah, yes, I wanted to go down, and I do, and my, my main, area, main areas are around uh, inspections and thermal inspections and um, and that world and a bit of surveying in there sometimes. And then suddenly you realise you've got gaps. So like unlike Dom, I'm not a surveyor, so I've had to go back to school and do a huge amount of research and work um, to even start to understand the fundamentals of ground surveying to then map that to what am I capturing from the air? And that's really helped bring me forward. So, you know, whilst there are some out there that say, well, you can't do um, drone surveying without being a surveyor, I'd argue in the nicest way that I'm a, I'm a tool. <laughs> that's an awful thing to say. I'm not a tool in that American sense, but I, I'm, I'm a tool in the toolbox for the surveyor. So working with yeah. a surveyor and at least understanding enough to be able to have a understanding of each other's terminology is often sufficient um, so the surveyor doesn't have to become a drone operator and the drone operator doesn't have to become a surveyor you, you, there's an overlap point um, so your personal development is crucial um, I think then you know there are there are formal trainings that are good to do so if you've just done your A2 CFC you know start already thinking about doing your GVC um, again talk to others in the group um, and I think ongoing personal development is part of also your mindset you asked me earlier is that part of who you are and i think it is i think stay curious and constantly keep your mind open to what's happening what's changing i mean i'm i'm for example at the moment i'm i'm super excited about the m30 dock now for those who don't know that's a mm -hmm. bit of kit that opens up and an, an m30 or m30t drone comes out and technically speaking it can go away, fly, when it needs to recharge, it lands again, the dock closes, keeps it watertight, and it's used for very remote sites like um, you know, oil platforms or drilling sites in South America. Um, and I'm super excited about that coming out for things that we're looking to do down the line. Although yeah. at the same time, I'm having to keep abreast of where are we with the um, regulations in terms of using that kit, because at the moment, you know, you cannot do that where there's a bit of kit taken off three miles away from me, five miles, 20 miles away from me, and no person on site because of the uh, VLOS rules here. Mm -hmm. And even with an OSC, um, which is the operational safety case for those who aren't aware in the UK, um, at the moment you couldn't do it because the operational safety cases, even the, the, the most extreme ones, you still have to have a person there um, for these quad flights. So I'm excited, but again, this is about keeping you abreast of what the changes are in the different caps and regulations. Uh, they will change over time because use cases will make that happen and innovations will open those up. And, and for me on that particular bit of kit, um, I'm waiting for that bit of kit to have an even higher uh, level uh, thermal sensor. It's, it's not quite up to the FLIR cameras yet, um, which is what I think we're gonna need for some of the work we're doing 
well, in fact, it is what we're going to need. Um, at the moment, the, the, M30, the M30T doesn't quite cut it for the level yeah. of detail and the constraints on the particular thing we're looking at. Um, it's, it's fantastic for certain things, which is like search and rescue. Uh, it's good for uh, a, a kind of slightly broader pen stroke of uh, certain um, thermal jobs. But yeah, we're waiting down the line to see if that sensor gets up a bit. So um, yeah, keep keep developing, keep being excited. And there's so much going on. It's really, really cool. I mean, it's it's most exciting industry I've worked in and uh, definitely more exciting than working in my desk job at EDF. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Well, there's a lot to unpick there. Um, first of all, the the sensors completely agree. So in terms of the M30T, fantastic model. For those of you that don't know, that is a mix between a Mavic and a Matrice 300. And that is a combined, you have a fixed camera. So in terms of you can't, you, well, you can't change the, the different payloads that are attached to it. So as Mark's referring to there, if you're looking to do really high standard of thermal inspection, something like an M300 with uh, a flare camera, some of the different options, they have the Flare View Pro, the TZ20 is a fantastic model. All of these, the X-T2, yes, thanks, Dan. Um, the M300, because of its interchangeability, you can add different payloads to it. The analysis that you can get from that is a lot better, which means you can dive deeper into the data that you're getting. Things like the M30 is fantastic for getting out into the industry. Amazing if you want to fly in the rain or really, really bad weather. But it just depends on, on what you're looking to do. It depends on the task. So as you can see from, from the list of companies behind us, that is the unbiased side of copters. We can offer you that 360 solution. So that is a software, that is a training, that is a drone, wherever that comes from. And we can advise what works best for you or what would work best for you, for example, Mark. So, yeah, you're completely right. And then just to jump back into that surveying analogy, this is exactly what the Copters Academy is all about. So we have copters, we have the drone side, the hardware, the software, but we also have Copters Academy. And this is a holistic learning platform where it can adapt and learn to how you learn and the skills that you have or, or what you want to hone in on. That humility that, that Steve was talking about earlier about being open to that we're not the finished artist. Call. I'm definitely not. I was listening to podcasts in the way to work today because I know I need to get better. And it's being self-aware of these different areas. That terminology that you mentioned there, Mark, that is the exact reason why we have the surveying course because people came to us and said, look, we want to work in the surveying industry, but we don't know how to. I'm not a surveyor. And as you say, you, you don't become the surveyor. You don't get rid of someone's job. You're helping that job. And that's why we refer to it as copters at revolutionizing that organization we're, we're not saying you don't have to go up and do the job to fix it we're just helping you so you know what, exactly where to fix what you need to be looking at and getting the exact right data for it so no i really appreciate that they're fantastic tips thanks for that mark that's that's spot on and mark You're just welcome. quickly where can people find you as well uh, if they wanted to reach out yeah i mean i i spend i, I you know i practice what i preach so um for Commercial side of work, I'm just Mark Sean Elliott, so M A R K S E A N E W -L, L I O T T. Sorry, the other Mark, but it is double T of mine. Um, that's on LinkedIn. Um, and then uh, I spend a lot of the rest of my time over on Instagram. Um, so yeah, just tap me up on there, and that's just S4G Drone Services. And, and then you can always private message me once we've connected there. I'm more than happy to have a chat and talk about some other things in the background if you want to. And um, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know. I'm an open, I'm a real person. Um, so yeah, yeah please, happy. please do contact me. I'm more than happy to. That's brilliant. No, thanks for that, Mike. That's amazing. And, and Steve, just to jump to yourself, um, in terms of time, I think we are running out. We need to get through some questions. So what would be your biggest tip for someone getting into the industry? Is it mindset? Is it training? Is it hardware? Like what, what is the game changer and what would you say is really going to accelerate someone getting into whatever industry it might be? Okay, yeah, I'll just I'll give you three that I think are, are very relevant for this. It's um, it, it's it's one have the tools to be able to do your job and create uh, create profitability, and so you have a viable business. So you know, have the right kit for the job, um, which you know, I'll leave to you. Is and as Mark talked talked about the uh, the business 
case, have a business case. You know, um, I think at some point we'll share um, a redacted version of our initial business case that we had for Copters, because it still rings true yeah. today and it would be very helpful for people. But from that, get your vision and your mission right. Know who you're serving and talk to those people. If you serve everybody, you serve nobody. Um, so, and it's a case of, I think thirdly is realize that if you are starting a business or you've got a small business, you're in sales and marketing by default. You have to be um, to, to grow your business, to be able to make your business viable. So those three things, have the right kit, uh, you know, have your vision and mission sorted so you know who, who, who you're going after, who you're focusing on, who you're serving, uh, and uh, and then uh, you know the rest will follow. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand and agree with that, Steve. Um, having the right tools is is something that we're constantly having to to work with when we're on the phones, when we're talking with people in the industry. So, is that drone going to give you the right data? As Mark was saying, then for for the job, is it going to be the N thirty T, or is it going to be something with slightly higher, well, a lot higher resolution with something of a, a flare product? So it just depends on what you need to go into and what level of data that you need. When we talk about the different levels of drones, you have your beginner, your minis, your intermediate, something like the the Mavic three Enterprise series, or your advanced with your matrices. It depends on on what you're wanting to get out of that. The more you invest in a camera, the better the camera is. The better the camera is, the better the data. The more data and the better the data, the more you can charge or the better that job is going to be. So it all depends on what your budget is, who your client is and what standard of work they need. As Mark said, the, the Mavic 2 Pro, fantastic drone, industry leader for a time for cinematography. The amount of work that that can pull in for people is fantastic. Um, so so it's knowing your client, knowing your industry and doing the research. Again, what, what Mark said at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, so that's absolutely fantastic, guys. Right. What we'll do is we'll um, we'll dive into some questions um, and we'll, we'll get them all gone through. If you are looking for a bit of a one to one with myself, with any of the team, please get in touch. We normally just do 10 of these. Um, but yeah, if you can get them booked in, my email is not on the slide but my email is jamie.cording at copters.com there will be an email sent out after this if you are interested and you want a, a, a 30 meeting 30 minute consultation get in touch ask any questions and as as mark was saying earlier there's no such thing as a stupid question i've helped hundreds of people get into the industry thousands of business revolutionize how they're going about their systems and processes get your questions in okay next so let's jump into the q a i think they've been coming through i think dan and mark have been answering most of them for us which is absolutely brilliant thanks everyone for doing that um and yeah let, let's go in um so ryan has asked uh, myself what is the best all-round bundle um i just want to make sure it can do it as much as possible um for the the equipment in terms of our bundles all of them are brilliant and that's why we, we advertise and that's why we push them out. The business starter packages do, as I said, they do what we said, they say on the tin. They're versatile, they're great for the industry. Personally, the new Mavic 3 Enterprise, the surveying drone, I think is an absolute game changer. It's cheaper than the Phantom 4 RTK. It gets better data, easy to use. It looks fantastic. It's simple to fly and everything is in one place. So yeah, that is my absolute pick of the bunch. The thermal is fantastic. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance is amazing. That bundle's great for the inspection bundle. Um, the new thermal bundle is awesome, but the pick of the bunch for me at the moment, um, a new favorite is the, the M3E. Um, so yeah, absolutely awesome. Um, Marie, I think I might have just lost it a little bit there, but Marie, um, yeah, you can reach out to, to Mark on LinkedIn. That'd be brilliant. Um, yeah, Mark, or, or I'm sure he can help you out with anything, that you've, any questions that you have. Um, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> yeah, give that a little scan, anyone, if you want to get him on LinkedIn. Um, okay, so public safety, Jeff West. Thanks, Jeff, for, for, the, for the question. Um, it just said, what would you recommend for public safety? Ideally, you do want to have a thermal. So either the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance with the inspection bundle or the brand new M3T, 
which is absolutely awesome. I'm yet to fire that, but hopefully this weekend. So they're the two bundles. The M3T, we do have that small amount of drones that are coming over from DJI as a, as a special request and a special surprise for us. So if you are interested, get in touch. The inspection bundle, we have 10 left of, 10 left. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, I hate to sound like QVC, but that is a very, very popular drone. And once they're gone, they're gone. Okay, so a bit of a different kind of question. Um, just uh, in terms of flying over drones and uh, flying over dual carriageways, Mark, have you had any experience with flying over roads, dual carriageways, and what sort of processes have you had? Because it is a tricky one. It's the same for, for ra railways and rail tracks. It is tough in terms of process. Do you, have you had much experience with that? Yeah, I mean, it is it's it is tricky when you get down to kind of busy um, and high risk areas. So a motorway as, as opposed to a, an A road, as opposed to a side road, you know, the more the traffic levels go up, the faster the traffic's moving, the higher the risk. Um, I mean, flying over it, you're going to be over it in a second, two seconds. You're going to cross crossways that way. So uh, as long as you have the height on it and um, what have you, then I would say it's probably less of a risk, um, you know, height, you know, pre-site checks, on-site checks, you know, make sure there's nothing that's going to distract the drone from that because you are literally over that road for seconds um, and chances of failure there are small. Um, if you're going to be hovering over near it at length, then you're into a completely different sort of kettle of fish where the planning has to increase. You probably have to close the road uh, and then you're into a very, very long process um, to make that safe. I mean, safety is the only key factor that changes there. Um, in, in terms of railways, just not on that. Um, we, we have a full, um, you know, procedure for network rail um, in the UK, and we we have that in our risk assessments. Um, we do risk assessments for every single job, by the way, um, and that's in our emergency procedures. Um, what to do if something happen. We do get in contact with Network Rail in advance. We get uh, we we basically get their advice and permission back uh, before we fly, and it all adds time to your planning. But it doesn't matter because the thought of having to actually ever enact that safety procedure is horrific. And I know for a motorway, you don't even want to think about what damage a drone could do uh, in terms of pileups. So, if you're going to avoid it, do, try and avoid it. Is what I'd say. You know. Um, if you have to do it, then plan the hell out of it, is my advice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's always a bit of planning that you can do to not get around it, but make that process safer. Everything about this industry now is about risk um, and uninvolved people. And you've got a hell of a lot of uninvolved people at a road and especially a busy one. Um, that's something that you can run by. Us. So if you do have any questions, let us know. Um, uh, Dom, one of the questions you asked was about overflight of people. So it needs to be the GVC, your level of training. Um, essentially, again, it's all about risk. It's all about the weight category of your drone. Um, so all, all of these drones do fall under the A2. So it's, it's good to use them that you're easier and better to fly closer to congested areas once you have that GVC. And you can then get that overflight with the GVC. The A2 will, will help you fly closer to people quicker because it's such an easy simple course but the gvc is where you need to be aiming um, i'm very conscious of time guys so i am going to wrap it up there unless there's any other questions steve or mark that you've got your eye on no i would just say that jamie i guess if there's more questions to just answer them off offline off this webinar sorry sorry i've not been uh you know as, as big a part of this but um it's been great to listen to you and nice to uh uh hear from mark as well so nice to e-meet you Yes, and, and likewise, Steve. It's the first time we've uh, actually had a chance to meet, and uh, so uh, we'll we'll have a chat offline sometime as well because it'd be nice to catch up one to one. Absolutely, yeah. And thanks everybody for joining. Um, and I'm sure uh, what I would recommend is is get some time with Jamie, um, just to talk through your specific circumstances because we will be able to help in one way or another, even if it's just as we talked about a little bit of advice. That's spot on. No, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for joining us. If I haven't got round or if we haven't got round to your questions, I'll be either giving you a call this afternoon or one of the team will uh, just to answer that. I would recommend massively booking in a meeting half an hour's time to get out all those questions, a bit of a business plan, as we said, just to 
go over what we've talked about today. If you do have any questions or you are interested in the drones, let us know. Get in touch. There's not many left or they're brand new. So we have to get in the waiting room. Thanks for your time, everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. It's a lot longer than what we planned. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's been some really good content that's to come out the come out the back of that. So um, yeah, Spawn, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.